Hey everyone, well we are long overdue for another edition of Live in the Sunroom. I've been busy talking to comedians, but today we return the focus to live music. Today we're hanging out with Hope Riot. She is a local singer-songwriter. Hope is a really interesting story. Her father, Rich Wright, used to own Wild Hairs, which was one of the original live music venues here in El Paso. So Hope literally grew up around live music. She made a really interesting record last year that was produced by one of my musical heroes, David Garza. Hope usually plays with a different stable of players here in town. Today, she is playing with Los Angeles-based drummer Alex Gonzalez on the Telecaster, gunslinger Jaffe Ryder, both very good friends, both very good players in their own right, and even I dust off the old bass guitar today. Now, keep in mind, we only had about an hour to arrange and rehearse these songs. We've never played them together before. But again, these are live, off-the-floor recordings, no overdubs, no trickery. Hope Riot performs live in the sunroom. So Hope, did it seem like all of this was inevitable? Like you never had a choice? You were going to be a musician? Yeah, I've said before, like I took the lazy path, you know? Like I, this is the family business, you know? Yeah. Like I could have worked really hard and been a scientist or something, but that wasn't, <laughs> wasn't like what my path was, I guess. It's been just kind of laid out before me the whole time, so. Yeah. I mean, you grew up around uh, Wild Hairs, which was one of the first bars in town that played original music, that had original artists coming around here. I mean, talk to me about like what that must have been like as being a kid. Oh my gosh. Growing up at Wild Hairs was 
completely, <laughs> I would never raise my children in a place like that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was cool. There was always some band crashing on the couch and I was always seeing some amazing guitarist live up close and personal. And my dad was really uh, like influential in my artistic growth like that. You know, he was very much uh, you know, he would leave CDs for me of cool bands that had played and he wouldn't, he would leave it on the side, like just leave it on my computer desk. So I would find it later and be like, oh, what's this? And kind of let me discover it on my own, but keeping those doors open, you know? Yeah. So hearing original music and seeing original artists come through, that was just something that instantly spoke to you about, you know, like, I'd like to do this. Uh, no, not at all. No. I totally didn't even, no, I never even possibly entertain the idea of being a musician until way later in life. Like I was, even as a teenager, I was, my way of rebelling was that I listened to no music whatsoever because my dad and his friends were so hip. I was like, I'm not, I'm not into that. And uh, I think I was like 20 and I just started uh, babysitting for Justin Leah who was working at Sonic Ranch. And I started meeting uh, people actually in the industry and just kind of offhandedly was like, oh yeah, I sing. And they called my bluff and then I showed them my bluff, <laughs> which yeah. wasn't really, you know? Yeah, you showed them your cards. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Eventually, uh, they kind of conv convinced me that I probably should try it and I did and then it's been, the rest is history. I couldn't, couldn't stop it if I tried now. So, okay, just so to catch up then, like a lot of really talented people in, a lot of really talented musicians in El Paso have roots tied to Sonic Ranch. Mm -hmm. And that really was kind of a birthplace for your artistic endeavors. Definitely. That, I can really honestly say that Sonic Ranch is the place that I became a musician. Because I, if it weren't for that place and meeting the caliber of artists that I did, like anyone could have told me, oh, you should really be a musician. You should really do that. You're good at it. But it wouldn't, I didn't believe anyone until I had really people that I really respected telling me like, you should do this, you know, people that I respected beforehand, before I met them or whatever in, their, in their art. And those were the people that were like, you should really be a musician. And I was like, all right, all right I guess if you say so, I can yeah. try it, so. Something far beyond the valley Something lost there sings to me you made a record at Sonic Ranch, Lacuna, last year, right? I started writing that record on a loop pedal and an iPad, and I went on tour to like 15 cities with a band called The Division Men. They helped me and uh, did all my shows with just my guitar and my loop pedal and the iPad for my drum sounds and a tambourine. And I was my whole band and I did all the instrumentation and I got back and I did that whole tour and I had nothing but t-shirts to sell people so that people were like, oh, I like your band. And I just was, oh, here's a t-shirt. You can't, I don't have anything recorded, so you can't listen to me. And so um, I got back and Tony Rancich, whom I had known forever, I told him like, hey, I need to record something because I, you know, if I'm going to. I know those people at the studio. I might as well just talk to them. And Tony was super excited and jumped right on. And I thought I was going to do an EP. I thought I was going to do five songs from an EP of stuff that I had on the loop pedal. And like, he called David Garza to come and uh, Manny Calderon, who's in, with the Chamanas now, and this guy, Pato Davila, who plays with Jimena Sariñana. And they all came in to help me record and halfway through the session I was like we should probably be finishing soon no and David was taking all sorts of time to do everything and I was like there's no sense of urgency and he's like oh yeah we're doing a whole record we're doing a full length album and I was like oh that's news to me <laughs> okay yeah so I wrote like another five songs in the studio and yeah so that like Sonic Ranch has been a hugely influential place just you know I wrote a bunch of my music there I recorded my first record there I decided to be a musician in that place so the producer of your record just one of the most talented Texans that I've ever met what was it like to make a record with David Garza David Garza is prolific and crazy <laughs> but it was like songwriting 101 you know like uh anything that you would really need to know about how to write a cohesive idea in music he's so well versed in it and so uh knowledgeable and so such a real bohemian artist in the way that uh 
just anything goes, you know, if it's kind of weird, cool, we'll make it fit. And that's where the character comes from. And, yeah. uh, huge, huge. He played at wild hairs too, a lot yeah. when he was younger. So that was also really cool to, to, for it to all come full circle. And I got to work with somebody who had seen me grow up literally. And, uh, yeah, he's great. I spent many hours learning from him. You you love four chords and the truth, right? I mean, that seems like what I get. From yeah, that. yeah, definitely. The si more more simplistic, the better. I find that to be a, a solid formula for myself, and that's what I was, of course, taught by all my mentors in time. Is like the most beautiful songs are the most simple, where you really just uh, bear it all and ultra, ultra vulnerable and you know, really let somebody in there and, you know, it's, it's easy to make something beautiful that's complicated, you know, like it's easy to make something beautiful when you're super technically proficient and, you know, that maybe easy is not the right word, but I feel like, uh, it's easier to build on top and build on top and build on top until you have a solid idea, but to really just rip it out, rip out all the extra superfluous detail until it's just a bare minimum of things is really, I think, the most beautiful concept, you know? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, you just get to the heart of the matter, right? Yeah, the, yeah. Because your live performances really are nothing like your record, at least not this record. Right. Yeah, it's true. Uh, well, like I said, when we wrote this record, when I wrote this record, I wrote it all on an iPad and with the loop pedal. So I had all sorts of uh, weird kind of electronic noises on it sort of and we really tried to flesh that out in the studio because Tony has amazing equipment at the ranch so we used what we had available yeah. to us and uh, I don't know I cannot afford a Juno 6 right. for, <laughs> for <Right>. tour <laughs> and so yeah like this next this next record though that I'm writing is I'm writing it mostly on guitar so it'll be a little bit more it'll match the record a little bit more yeah our live show is it hard to be a solo artist in the sense that you don't necessarily have like a guitarist that you're co-writing with, or is it tough to come up with everything on your own? It has its pros and its cons. Um, I know so many bands who have fallen victim to uh, personal pr issues and stuff within the band, interpersonal problems, people that don't get along, you know, people that think uh, two, like two very strong people in the band who have c totally different creative ideas and that can really be a huge problem. I, I really like, uh, being a solo artist just to avoid all that stuff like I'm the boss and what I need done here gets done and whatever I do um, Finally, what does the future hold? I mean you're talking about a new record You're talking about maybe another chapter for you as a musician as an artist. What's next? Oh my god, there's a big big change everything's gonna change i'm gonna do the new record we're thinking about i mean we i mean i am thinking about changing the band name uh everything's gonna everything's gonna be different it's gonna be topsy-turvy i go to record in mexico city soon with uh the producer of molotov my dear friend milo who is the person who started this whole musician thing in my life so that'll be another full circle thing I get to complete and uh, after that I'm gonna move to LA and go play with the big dogs I yeah. guess they say <laughs> and uh, yeah I want to record before I get to LA so I can really like encapsulize my last moments in El Paso and you know this this place is a huge uh, creative place for me it's been very enriching for my art so I'm really excited to pack it up into one neat little box and sell it to you <laughs> for $10 or whatever, you know, it's going to be really good. And, uh, I have a lot of huge changes happening in my life and I hope that translates into the music as well. Stop. 